Hey, what's going on, everyone? This is Mitch. Good Tuesday morning to you all. Hope you guys are doing well, having a great start to your day, getting up and getting after it, and having a great work week so far. I got you a big update on what's going on out there in the tropics, and then we're going to give you an update on what's going to happen in the immediate U.S. for most of the country. There's a severe weather threat, not only for today, but over the next couple days, it's going to be pretty active here in our neck of the woods in the U.S., so we'll talk on that. We'll talk about today specifically and really only. But then we're going to give you a big update on the tropics. And I'm going to go on and tell you guys, nothing's really changed with the models from what we talked about last night. There is still a threatening scenario, a concerning look on the models with this tropical wave that we talked about last night. Nothing has changed. It seems to be the trend has been the trend throughout hurricane season so far that, you know, things will look concerning on the models and then they'll kind of go away from it. Uh, but I can tell you, this is stuck like glue over the last 24 to 36 hours. And then we're going to give you an update on what is now major Hurricane Fiona. It's a Category 3 hurricane affecting areas of the Turks and Caicos Islands as we speak right now. Not a direct impact, but it's going to scrape Bermuda. And then I think it's going to make an all-out impact to areas of social... Uh, to Nova Scotia, almost called it social media, uh, Nova Scotia in Newfoundland. It's going to make a direct impact for someone in that area. So we'll get more detailed on this tonight. I did last night. We'll do it again tonight. Stay tuned for tonight. But we're going to give you just some uh, surface-based information, if you will, in this video. So if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. You know, I can't say it enough. Hit me up on Twitter, guys. I'm constantly giving updates. If it's not every hour, it's every two hours. It's a great way to follow along, get up-to-date information. If you ever consider joining my channel, it's a great way to support what I do monthly. i got 18 incredible members that do so. Trying to get to 20 by the end of this month, it's a big goal of mine. Thank you all for supporting me in that way. And if you guys got anything that I can pray about, pray over, please put it in the comments below. It gives me an opportunity to pray over it, and it gives others an opportunity to do so too. So let's take a look at the Atlantic Basin as a whole. Got a little piece of energy surging through Wisconsin. We're going to expect some more severe weather in Minnesota and maybe into northern Wisconsin, the UP and Michigan, a little bit later this evening. But your eyes immediately go to this. This is major Hurricane Fiona, Category 3 hurricane, per the 5 a.m. update. And I can tell you a lot of folks are going to watch this after we know went through a couple updates. Um, but per the 5 a.m. update, this is a 115-mile-per-hour storm. Hurricane hunters are continuously going into this and showing that it is con the, the pressure continues to drop, which tells us there's a lot going on under the hood and that this is strengthening. And then you look at this wave. Listen, a lot of times models latch on to these tropical waves and, the, and actually what is happening isn't really uh, doing well with what the models are trying to show. But I can tell you, this wave looks much more robust, which isn't necessarily a good thing this morning than it did um, last night. It looked very weak. It looked like your average tropical wave, but this thing is taking full advantage of something we call diurnal maximum, which is basically a, a favorable time period of the day, D-max for short, where basically the sea surface temperature and the air, air temperature is at its most difference. It is, it's basically, uh, you know, it can be five to 10 degree difference, and that causes a robust and convection. We'll talk more on that tonight. But here we go. Major Hurricane Fiona, 115 mile per hour hurricane, like I said, affecting areas of the Turks and Caicos Islands. Hopefully you folks are faring well out there this morning, making its closest path uh, to it right now. But I can tell you, if you look at this, it looked better last night, only because you had a cleared out eye. But I can tell you, this is a powerful hurricane, a lot going on under the hood. It's showing, you know, by the actual pressure dropping that this is a strengthening hurricane and it's going to top out at a Category 4 hurricane. And I think the only thing that's going to stop it from becoming a Category 5 hurricane is the fact that I think eventually it's going to run into some uh, lower sea surface temperatures. But here it goes. Here's this robust tropical wave right here, and it's popping off some intense convection this morning. It's getting an aid from what we call an outflow from uh, what is Fiona, which is over here on this part of your screen. This little outflow comes in and enhances convection. And uh, listen, this is cruising at a pretty low latitude, and uh, it's about to enter the Windward Islands and then the Eastern Caribbean over the next 48 hours. And let me tell you, model guidance is very excited about this developing. I can tell you the GFS develops it much more quicker, which I would almost uh, kind of nod my head towards only because it looks so healthy right now. So let's give you an update on Fiona. Fiona, like I said, 115 mile per hour storm forecast that would continue to be a major hurricane all the way through the rest of the work week 
and make its closest pass to Bermuda overnight Thursday into Friday. It's kind of like a deja vu situation with Earl, but I think Earl passed, yes, Earl passed to the south and southeast. This is going to pass to the north and uh, to the west and then northwest and north. But forecast to still be a hurricane. This is going to lose its tropical characteristics as it heads into areas of southeast Canada. But, you know, just, just don't focus too much on that. This is going to be like a hurricane moving into areas of um, eastern Nova Scotia and then western Newfoundland. And uh, let me tell you, this is going to be a powerful system. <clears throat> so I hope you guys are hunkering down. I'll give you an update for you folks a little bit later tonight. Uh, we'll get much more detail on it. But here it is, the latest 2 a.m. update. I think this will upgrade to probably a 50% or 60% chance within the next five days on the 8 a.m. update. But as of 2 a.m., it's a 40% chance for this concerning wave to develop. And then we have this 60% chance to develop. Listen, I think both of these are going to take a name, potentially. I think... This technically has a higher chance to take the name Gaston, and then maybe this will be Herman, maybe vice versa. Maybe just this takes one name, but really all that doesn't matter because this isn't going to bother anybody. But I guess the question is, if we're talking about names, is this going to be Gaston or is it going to be Herman? We're just not sure, or Hermine. I'm just going to call it Herman until somebody tells me differently. But um, this is the concerning wave right here. Of course, we got Fiona. Uh, I think the Hurricane Hunters found sub 960 millibar pressure in this, so I think this is going to get upgraded probably to 120 mile per hour storm on the next update. But this is a concerning wave right here. We'll take a look at the latest model guidance and really just focus on Fiona real quick. Uh, Bermuda, the good news with Bermuda is most model guidance now, even the GFS, has this passing now to the west, northwest, and north. But it still has bad news as we're getting into overnight uh, Friday into Saturday morning for areas of Nova Scotia and Newfoundland. I'll give you a much more detail on this, but as of right now, a powerful sub 940 millibar, might as well say hurricane. This will be like equivalent to probably category two, category three conditions, potentially slamming into areas of Newfoundland and Nova Scotia. The European, same kind of deal. European, I would nod your head towards it because it showed it not making direct impact on Bermuda the entire range. So that's good news for Bermuda. But I think you guys will still have direct impacts by Fiona. But the European, just as strong as the GFS, a little bit more west. Therefore, it affects more areas in Nova Scotia, moves in as a powerful system, but then it drifts towards Newfoundland. And I'm telling you, this is going to be a high impact event for you folks this weekend. So stay tuned for that. Let's take a look at this tropical wage, which will eventually be probably within the next, within hours, probably less than hours, the next hour or two, I guarantee you almost, this will be labeled Invest 98L. Here it comes. We'll start off, you know, tomorrow morning, you already have, you know, an L popping up here on the GFS. The GFS wants this to have a tropical storm hitting the southern uh, areas of the Windward Islands, Leeward Islands, down here, very low in latitude. And then we're getting into Friday morning, has a strong tropical storm in the middle of the Eastern Caribbean. But this continues. And I think a little bit of the leftover lower sea surface temperatures from Fiona, actually, I think there's going to be a time frame between Friday and maybe Saturday, maybe into Sunday, where this doesn't strengthen much. And then it gets into the middle of the Caribbean, sometimes Sunday. It's now south of Jamaica as an all-out hurricane. I mean, this the GFS has it gets its act together very quickly. As soon as it becomes a powerful hurricane, I'm talking about a Category 2, Category 3 hurricane, it immediately begins to start to chug northwest, makes a close pass to Jamaica, and then heads into some very favorable conditions just south of Cuba where the sea surface temperatures, I would argue, is probably some of the warmest in, in the world. And uh, makes impact on the southern coastline of Cuba, Goes over it, gets into the air, an area between Key West and Cuba. A very powerful hurricane at this point. Makes landfall there. Might weaken due to the higher uh, mountaintops of Cuba. And then we're starting to get, like I said, eight, nine days out. Very unreliable time frame. But listen, it still shows a powerful hurricane entering the eastern Gulf of Mexico. Making landfall around Tampa Bay about 10 days out. Then riding up the rest of Florida into the Carolinas. So this is still showing it. What does the Euro latest European show? There is a difference between this European overnight and the one yesterday afternoon. And the big difference is, is one, it doesn't develop uh, what could be Gaston or Herman near as fast, not even close. Therefore, it takes more of a westward path. 
At this point, we're around, uh, let's stop it right here. We're around Sunday morning. For the same time frame on the GFS, this has an all-out hurricane already for uh, uh, Sunday morning. But on the European, it's not even a tropical storm yet. There's a big difference in the short range, um, short to medium range. And, you know, that makes a big difference for the long range, obviously, here. But, you know, we keep this moving here. And eventually, this gets into the Western Caribbean begins to strengthen, doesn't really bother Jamaica, and it makes that pass between Cuba Cuba and the Yucatan Peninsula, and then this is when it starts to fill that rocket fuel, and then we get 10 days out, and we got a strengthening hurricane per the Euro somewhere in the eastern Gulf of Mexico, um, but it's a lot different. It's a lot slower. It's a lot weaker. Therefore, a lot of the ensembles has this running right into Central America, so that is a path it can take, and in fact, I would argue that the ensembles ticked a little further uh, west, but there is a lot more members. This is one week out, uh, shows many members uh, one week from, ten, from today, uh, right in the western Caribbean, um, as a weak tropical storm to as strong as a hurricane. But we go 240 hours out, what does it show? Um, it shows so, some members hitting the Yucatan Peninsula and then moving into the middle of the Gulf of Mexico, and then some members... Uh, moving more north and then affecting Cuba and Florida, but it's very far out. We got a lot to figure out with this, but I can tell you, if you look at the GFS, this is going to be a highly favorable environment once it gets to the Central Caribbean. Anticyclonic flow, no shear, no real dry air, high, um, high uh, surface sea surface temperatures in this area. Heat content for the surface temperatures on the sea right out here. I mean, it, in the anticyclonic flow, this storm will be ventilating. The upper wind pattern will be very favorable, and nothing is going to stop this from gradually, at least gradually strengthening in the central to western Caribbean. Nothing. I really don't think so. Stay tuned tonight. I have a much bigger update on that. But let's talk about what's going to happen in our neck of the woods in the U.S. Slight risk of severe storms, a tornado threat, 2% risk, 25 miles in a given location for areas of the U.P. and Michigan. Be careful. Got a couple guys who live up in that area, but this is going to be for the western areas of the U.P. and Michigan. So just be careful. Some severe weather is certainly possible. A wind threat there, 5% risk to see wind damage, and a hail threat, 15% risk to see hail pushing one inch or diameter or higher in this yellow area. So just be, be mindful of the weather today. So we look in the southeast, very quiet day. The only area that's going to see a lot of showers and storms is the central areas of uh, the peninsula of Florida and southern areas, a lot of tropical downpours. Other than that, maybe an isolated shower or two, areas of Alabama and Georgia, but pretty quiet weather otherwise. The northeast, you got a disturbance moving through this morning. This will continue to keep clouds around for Maine, uh, New Hampshire, Vermont. This will keep temperatures probably kind of low, probably into the 50s and 40s. But other than that, maybe some showers drift in the northeast Ohio, western areas of Pen uh, Pennsylvania. Other than that, pretty quiet weather day, but not tomorrow. Stay tuned. Tomorrow can be a pretty active weather day for interior areas of the northeast. South central U.S., pretty quiet. There's really nothing to mention, really nothing at all. Um, the north, uh, like I said, the, the north central U.S., though, active weather expected. Uh, conditions will clear out, but look at these. Look at these cells in northern Minnesota. These have a supercell look to them, and this is for around 6 to 7 p.m. this afternoon, this evening in this area. These are going to pop off, and these can be quite intense and dangerous, guys. Won't be surprised if we get a tornado or two in this area today, but let's hope not. And then this will move. They will kind of weaken as they get into the UP of Michigan. But I'll tell you what, there's going to be a very small area in Wisconsin that you need to watch out for some severe weather today. Uh, temperatures, very hot in the middle of the country. Missouri, Oklahoma, areas in Nebraska. The cold front's moving through the Dakotas, though, today. That's going to make it to the eastern U.S. by Thursday and Friday. Very hot. Oklahoma, uh, Arkansas, Louisiana, uh, areas of western Tennessee. And then even warming up into the Carolinas and Virginia. It's going to be your classic summer-type day for this entire area of the country. But hanging on to fall-type conditions in the entire uh, northeast. Very warm conditions everywhere else. But fall is coming. The front's coming. It's going to knock it down. That's all I got, guys. Stay tuned tonight. Got you a big update. God bless. And uh, have a great Tuesday.